Day 875 of the Trump administration. The president is in something of a mess of his own making, starting with his comments yesterday that he indeed would be open to dirt on a political opponent if offered by a foreign power. As he put it to ABC News, I think I'd take it. He went on to add this. When somebody comes up with oppo research, right, they come up with oppo research. Oh, let's call the FBI. The FBI doesn't have enough agents to take care of it. But you go and talk honestly to congressmen. They all do it. They always have. And that's the way it is. It's called oppo research. Two months ago, Robert Mueller detailed multiple Russian offers of assistance to the Trump campaign. In his report, the investigation found 140 contacts between Trump officials and Russians. This morning, as the controversy over Trump's comments was building, he defended himself on social media. And we quote, I meet and talk to foreign governments every day. I just met with the Queen of England, UK, the Prince of Wales. And we're pretty sure here he meant Wales without the H, not the seagoing mammals. The PM of the United Kingdom, the PM of Ireland, the president of France and the president of Poland. We talked about everything with a capital E. Should I immediately call the FBI about these calls and meetings? How ridiculous. I would never be trusted again. The White House communications shop also swung into action with its own explanation of Trump's comments, including his assertion that the FBI should not be alerted about attempt attempted election interference. I was standing just feet away from the president in his exchange with uh, George Stephanopoulos. It was very clear. The president said if there was wrongdoing, of course he'd turn it over to the FBI. The interviewer, Stephanopoulos, did point out the, the FBI director, for Christopher Wray, has said campaigns should reach out to the bureau if they are contacted by a foreign entity. The president responded the FBI director is wrong. Right. But he, he, first of all, I think we were talking about James Comey at the time. And we all know James Comey sure is wrong after being a convicted liar and leaker. So that's what the president was talking about. Not clear there. Members of Trump's own party also weighed in. Here's how two of his strongest supporters in Congress reacted. It is not OK for any public official to receive assistance from a foreign government, <clears throat> whether it be anything of value, money or, or oppor opposition research. I hope we'll do two things. We'll make that clear to everybody so you don't go down this road. And then we'll look at what happened in 2016 with Chris Christopher Steele, because he was a foreign agent paid for by the Democratic Party to do opposition research on Trump. Is it right for the president to say that he would listen if foreigners offered dirt on his political opponents? Is that the kind of help that you would take? I think we all see you're talking about a hypothetical. Are you saying what would you have done? Would you have come with problematic? Doesn't the president have to set a tone about what is right and what is wrong? I think the president has been very clear. The president does not want foreign governments to interfere in our elections. He's he been said very, he would been welcome very strong that assistance. He did not say he'd have a foreign He said he would look government. at the information, listen to it, and if there were a problem, he would go to the FBI. I've watched the president. I believe the president would always do the right action. So while a lot of Republicans today deflected to Hillary, to Steele, to Comey, Nancy Pelosi's reaction could be called unsparing and yet careful. What the president said last night shows clearly, once again, over and over again, that he does not know the difference between right and wrong. And that's probably the nicest thing I can say about him. Would you consider that grounds to launch impeachment proceedings? Uh, the, uh, it has nothing to do with any campaign. I make sure I want you to all to understand that. As we go down this path to seek the truth for the American people and to hold the president accountable, it has nothing to do with politics or any campaigns. Earlier tonight, the chairwoman of the Federal Election Commission offered a very rare and very blunt public warning. We can't remember anything quite like this before. And we quote, I would not have thought that I needed to say this. Let me make something 100 percent clear to the American public and anyone running for public office. It is illegal for any person to solicit, accept or receive anything of value from a foreign nation in connection with the U.S. election. This is not a novel concept. Any political campaign that receives an offer of a prohibited donation from a foreign source should report that offer to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is where we are, and it all comes as the president is just a couple of weeks away 
from a planned meeting with Vladimir Putin when they attend that G20 summit in Japan. In an interview yesterday, Putin sounded oddly less optimistic about relations with the U.S. К сожалению, мы ничего подобного не можем сказать о наших отношениях с Соединенными Штатами. Они деградируют, становятся все хуже и хуже. За последние годы в отношении России действующая администрация приняла уже, по-моему, несколько десятков решений, связанных с санкциями. Meanwhile, there are also new developments tonight involving two of the president's closest aides. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders is leaving after almost two years on the job. In fairness, we haven't seen her a lot. She talks to reporters in the driveway sometimes, but it's been 94 days since she held a press briefing. And an independent federal watchdog appointed by the president is urging the White House to remove Kellyanne Conway for violating the Hatch Act, which even interns at the White House learn prohibits partisan politicking by White House employees, because ideally you're working for the American people. Conway has repeatedly weighed in on political candidates over the past year. Here she is talking about the 2020 Democrats. If he were a Republican running against them, they would immediately call him a sexist. But I'd also ask him, what exactly have you accomplished that qualifies you to be the commander in chief? I'm yet to see presidential timber. I just see a bunch of presidential wood chips. Amy Klobuchar, who seems to be a very nice person, I guess, unless you're on her staff. You can change the A to an, an O and get oh my instead of Amy there. Elizabeth Warren's it. running for president. She tried to appropriate somebody else's ethnicity. So much to talk about, so little time. Here for our lead-off discussion on a Thursday night, Peter Baker, chief White House correspondent for The New York Times, Frank Figluzzi, former FBI assistant director for counterintelligence, Mimi Rocha, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, now a distinguished fellow in criminal justice at the Pace University School of Law, and Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff at CIA and Pentagon, former chief counsel for the House Intel Committee. Jeremy, I'd like to begin with you. Your reaction to the president's words now over 24 hours later. They do linger. What innocent person says what the president of the United States said in this interview? What innocent person says this was not illegal? In fact, I would do it again. I think it is clear consciousness of guilt that he called for Russian assistance. He well received Russian assistance. He welcomed Russian assistance and he has rewarded Russian assistance. And what's most astonishing, Brian, is that he has said that in the 2020 campaign, not only would he welcome it again, but that he urges everybody else to accept it as well. It is the complete undermining and breakdown of our election system. If the person at the top of the political food chain, the president says the rules don't apply. Frank Figluzzi, I'd like to play a clip from a former colleague of yours, Andrew McCabe, appearing today with Nicole Wallace. The comments I heard yesterday only reaffirm for me the concerns that we had in May of 2017. If I am a foreign intelligence officer today, the message I got from the president's own words yesterday was it is open season on U.S. political figures in 2020. So, Frank, play it the way you usually do. Hyperbole aside, what are the real world consequences of what the president said yesterday? How will they stay with us? Well, we're going to see an increase, uh, perhaps more than ever before in recent history, in attempts at foreign governments to mingle, meddle and interfere with our upcoming election. And we're going to see it at all levels. And here's why. They now see more than ever a permissive, receptive environment. Today, around the world, in world capitals, intelligence service directors were having translators translate the president's words. They were scratching their heads saying, did, did he just say he would be receptive and not report to the FBI if we gave him research on his opponents? Answer, yes, that's what he said. And so any intelligence service worth their salt is saying, how can we get this done get him vulnerable and compromised by having him listen to our stuff and yet not come across the radar screen of the FBI, the CIA, et cetera. So they're going to get more sophisticated at doing it. They're going to try and do it. They're going to do it in a way that doesn't make it look like they're foreign intelligence services. And it's going to get very, very complicated. And usually the attorney general would be the one to step in, call time out and say, look, Mr. President, you're wrong. I have the back of the FBI. They are our premier law enforcement agency. 
He hasn't done it. We've heard nothing from him. And the intelligence services around the world are saying, let's make this happen. Mimi Roca, I never thought a document from the Federal Election Commission could be sobering. I've never seen a document like that from the Federal Election Commission. Question for you is, did the president increase his legal peril at all yesterday? I think he did. I mean, and, you know, it's striking to me that one of the things Nancy Pelosi said today is that this is the, you know, the president doesn't know right from wrong. I really respectfully beg to differ with that. I think, if anything, what this statement uh, in the interview shows is that he knows he just doesn't care. And it puts in a new light all of the conduct, I think, that Mueller documented. Because, you know, he spent, Trump spent so long telling us it didn't happen. I didn't meet with the Russians. Yes, I met with the Russians, but it wasn't about the election. Okay, we met with them, but, you know, now we're at the point that it's okay. It's okay to do this. That's where he's been all along. It's just now that he's admitting it. But I think it puts that conduct in a new light of, yeah, I, I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing this. That's why I wouldn't admit doing it. But now I'm admitting it. I just don't care that it's wrong. So, it, it, you know, to the extent that willfulness, intent, is an element of any of these crimes, he has, like, blown through the water on that. I mean, you, you, would, you barely would need anything other than that interview to show the president's intent to not only commit a crime in the future, which he's announced and admitted, but I think puts light on his conduct in the past as well. Peter Baker, any senior Republicans who are in the president's orbit uh, and uh, by default in your orbit as expressing real regret? All we have to go on so far is the president tweeting about Wales. Yeah, actually, there was a pretty universal uh, reaction against this by Republicans on Capitol Hill today. You saw any number of Republican senators say pretty flatly, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. The answer is supposed to be no. You heard not just Lindsey Graham, who you played there, but Johnny Isaacson, Joni Ernst, Marsha Blackburn, Lisa Murkowski, one Republican after another saying, no, I wouldn't do this. This isn't the kind of thing you should do. Now, some of them, as Senator Graham did, tried to then turn the tables on the Democrats by saying, well, what about Christopher Steele? That's a different situation. Obviously, there's plenty to argue about with regard to the Steele dossier. Uh, but, of course, Christopher Steele wasn't working for a hostile government, the Russians. And he uh, did, in fact, turn his dossier over to the FBI. It's a different kind of circumstance. The question is what the FBI then did with it. Uh, to justify, you know, its investigation. So I think the Republicans are very uncomfortable with this today. They did not want to see the president revive this. Remember, just a couple weeks ago with the, with the Mueller report, it seemed like he had put the Russia part of this thing behind him. And the issue was about obstruction of justice and these subpoenas, but not about Russia. Now he's put that question, his relationship with Moscow, right back in the center of the American debate. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.